What's cracking everybody's FL Rose here bringing you some Pokemon Go Battle League content. Today's video we're taking a look at another strong team in the Great League. This time centralized around a very strong core breaker that I am not one of the first people to find out, but I've been talking about it since before the season started. Zionic actually put it in one of his videos recently. We're going to be talking about Driftblim. Driftblim, in my opinion, is one of the best current core breakers in the meta, having the ability to completely destroy Gastrodon. Quad Sire has a very positive matchup, and also it's able to beat a lot of the other flyers because of that coverage of Icy Wind and Shadow Balls just hit so hard. And if you haven't seen the Astonish damage on this thing yet, stay tuned because it's actually insane how much this thing does. Now, to back this Pokemon up, I had a lot of, like, back and forth about what to pair with Drifloom. I thought maybe Gastrodon, or maybe another ground type, and then maybe I went with Feraligator. It's like, every time I pick something, it seems to be core broken by something I'm afraid of, but I just went with the tried and true, trusty Claude Sire. It's on almost every team this season for a good reason. It's got the Poison Sting buff in its damage, and the Stone Edge Earthquake coverage is just immaculately good for the meta. And now, in the uh, third slot here, we've got a safe switch of Dunsparce. I wanted to try it out with the buff rollout. Even though Rock Slide has been nerfed, I feel like Rock Slide and rollout just kind of level each other off as far as the damage from Rock Slide being taken away. But the rock and ground coverage is overall very, very strong. And this team went on a really strong 8-2 and two run here, which I'm going to show you all here as we get started into these games. Getting into the first game, we have a Claude Sire lead. This is exactly what I like to see here on the lead. We're going to be able to go for Icy Wind. Now, Astonish has slightly worse pacing than, um, than Hex. So you're going to get a little bit less energy. But look at how much damage is already missing after just five of those moves. Now, my opponent makes a very nice catch here into a Feraligator. But there's an important thing to note. The attack drop means now that my Dunsparce does not have to fear losing this matchup. The Shadow Gator almost two shots with the Hydro Cannons without the attack drop. Now with the attack drop, I'm able to cleanly take one. I could even take a second one if I wanted to, but I'm going to keep some health on my Dunsparce here. Uh, we're going to go for the Drill Run. That is going to take out the Feraligator, and the opponent now comes in with their Machamp, not wanting to come in with their Feraligator, or not the Feraligator, not wanting to come in with their Claude Sire here and risk eating a Drill Run here. But this basically gives me exactly the alignment that I need here, as I can put my Claude Sire on this Machamp and resist all of its damage completely, as Fighting and Rock are both resisted by Claude Sire. And then I just have my Drift Blim for the opponent's Claude Sire. As long as I save Shield for the uh, the Claude Sire having those uh, those Rock Slides. But what I'm going to do here is, since I'm ahead on energy, I believe, um, or I thought I was, I realized the opponent actually had a little bit of energy before they swapped out as they went for one and then the move. I'm going to go for my Earthquake here. And then I ha I thought like maybe I should try to catch the Earthquake on my Drift Blim, but I try and I don't want to get fancy. I'm actually going to come in and farm down with the Astonishes. I cannot get over how much damage those do. It's like, it's like hitting something with like Dragon Tail. I mean, I think they're about the same damage, but that it just hits so hard and the opponent now at this point has decided to leave the game knowing that it's over the Icy Wind and the Astonish will be enough to knock out good game to the opponent and these battles like i hit the meta teams real quick like after day one after like the first few sets it's all meta teams and of course i see as i'm staring at a prim arena which is very very rare in the open great league at least at the moment um i'm gonna go for five here i'm hoping that maybe trainers aren't quite yet accustomed to the astonish counts and we get a shield with the icy wind to be fair that icy wind probably would have put them very close to being knocked out anyway so maybe in their mind it was regardless of what it was it could be a good shield the opponent, however, counter swaps a Talon Flame, and trainers, that is not a good swap in the boom! to the uh, roll uh, to the uh, Dunsparce using rollout. Now, I think that maybe they meant to go in with the Superior here. That would have definitely been the better answer to the Dunsparce. But unfortunately for my opponent, we still would have had the Claude Sire in the back to deal with the Talon Flame. So I think that in either case, I think we were going to be in solid position here. Because even if the Drift Blim has to come in, get rid of the Superior, and then they have, you know, just a little bit of Primarina, like between Primarina and Talon Flame, like Claude Sire was absolutely handling that back, or the back two in that case. So. Frenzy Plant's gonna get the knockout, gonna go with the Shadow, or gonna come in with the Shadow Drift Blim here. And by the way, also, if you are um, looking to run this team, um, as I, I try to mention the alternatives at the beginning, but now I'm testing you guys to see if you're actually watching. Uh, no, I'm kidding. I just completely forgot to mention it at the start. But if you're not if you're not fond of using Drift Blim, I feel like Drift Blim is like the thing that you want to use here. Um, for a Claude Sire, either you have the Claude Sire and you want to use it, or if you don't want to risk being so weak to ice, which, I mean, in my opinion, there's not enough ice yet in the meta to really be afraid of it. Um, you could do another ground type, like Gastrodon. 
And in the third slot, any real safe swap works. I just really like Dunsparce. I think it's really strong right now. So in this next game, we have the Machamp, the opponent opting to stay in and then trying to catch a move on the Quad Sire. I'm not sure if they were just trying to bank the energy or if they saw how much damage the Astonishers were doing. But at this point, again, I have a seriously positive matchup into this uh, into this Quad Sire here. I'm not going to swap out because I know I'm going to win this matchup, especially when I'm up an entire Icy Wind on them. So I'm going to go for three Astonishes for uh, optimal timing here into this two-turn move user Quad Sire. Going to get the shield here. And I think at this point, I could just try to farm down, which is what I'm going to look to do here. I'm hoping I can. If I can't, well, shoot, that's going to suck. But... We're going to go for this farm down. The opponent swapping in their Machamp, and thankfully I'm able to react just quick enough as they did need one more for the Stone Edge, and I'm able to get the swap in. Now, they needed a one-turn swap, or they got a one-turn swap there, which meant, because let me break this down kind of turns-wise, right? Because Karate Chop is a two-turn move, Astonish is a three-turn move, and then you have the one turn um, from the swap that was done so, in essence, their swap plus Karate Chop was three turns, which is why I was able to go for the Astonish and then swap to catch the move. Had they gotten the zero turn swap if their damage had registered properly, which is a whole like whole layer of mechanics that is just a pain to have to try to memorize and go through. But um, for those uh, you know, for those of you who kind of have an idea as to what I'm going at, if not, um, if you go look at Phil Tactical, he actually did a really good video about the uh, damage registration error and how it affects swaps. But essentially, um, if if your damage is still registering during a charge move, you're going to get a one turn swap. And maybe, maybe at some point I'll get enough footage to make a video that kind of explains it. Um, I think that might actually be kind of a helpful thing. Uh, but the opponent comes in with a Feraligator. I'm just going straight for the Shadow Ball here. I feel like at the worst case scenario, if they do shield us, I just come in with the Unsparse. But the opponent doesn't shield it! They call the Icy Wind! Boom! And we're just going to farm down with the Drift Blim. So that's going to be a good game. We'll play to the opponent. Getting into the next game here, we have yet another Shadow Machamp. They seem to be everywhere today. I don't know where they came from. And there's an Oranguru, and now I'm like, I'm really not sure how to play this out. Oranguru is a very awkward Pokemon for this team. So actually, what I'm going to try to do, I'm going to shield the Brutal Swing, and I'm going to go for an Icy Wind. One of two things is going to happen. I'm either going to get the shield back, or the opponent's going to let it go, and they're going to accept the chip damage, which now I can come in with my Dunsparce, and they're within uh, range for me to get them with a KO with one move. Plus, they're debuffed, so I know I don't have to shield this. So we're going to go for one rollout here and then go for the move. Maybe go for a little bit more energy. I'm just going to go for the one move. I don't want to take too much confusion damage here, knowing that there's a Machamp in the lead. We're going to end up getting aligned back on the Machamp, but hopefully we'll be able to get a shield at least because the opponent did instantly switch out here. Um, so now we're going to go for rollout number one. Rollout may or may not get a shield, but it does get a shield, which is really helpful for me here. I'm going to go for the drill run on, on really honestly bad timing here, but this is only because... I want to be able to make sure I get this move off, and that means more to me than the timing. And then because they have the Machamp, I'm just going to come in with my Claude Sire. Again, we wall the move set. This is the perfect thing. Even though Drifblim double resists fighting, the fact that Machamp has Stone Edge just means that it's even more important for me to make sure that Claude Sire is the one absorbing that energy. Now, the opponent comes in here with a Dusk Noir, and my goodness, I am so ready to try this thing at some point because it looks like so much fun now, but it's... You know, it's straight ghosts, and in a meta with a lot of allowed normals, it's kind of risky. My opponent does go for the Shadow Ball. I was hoping they would bait, but the Astonishes are going to knock out the Dusk Noir, and now Machamp's going to come in, and I'm like, man, I'm going to have to shield this up, and we're going to be able to just go for a farm down here. The opponent didn't survive two Astonishes, and that's going to be a good game. We're getting into the next game here. I missed this transition. Oh, well, here we go. Swoobat in the lead. This is spicy. The opponent has confusion on the Swoobat, but we're staying in here because they have the super effective moves. And they did lag there. It didn't look, it looked like there was lag, but it was actually visual lag if you saw the two confusions registered just at the very end there. But we were able to get this farm down, and then the opponent comes in with a Salazzle. I probably should go for the Icy Wind here, but I'm going to go for the Shadow Ball because even if I go for Icy Wind, they can simply just swap out and there's another uh right and i'm trying i'm trying to take a moment to explain some of the turn mechanics here because it would help to kind of understand why i did what i did so i stayed in to go for one more hex against the slazzle because incinerate is five turns whereas the astonish is only three so damage registers on that fourth turn which means that as long as i swap out before that fourth turn whatever comes in is going to accept the damage of the incinerate so i do one astonish then we swap to the dunsparce 
That's going to absorb this incinerate damage, which means that my Drift Blim still retains its old HP from before it swapped out. Now the opponent's going to come in here with Atropius, and this game is all but one at this point, as the Claude Sire, again, just going to have the ability to sweep this team now as uh, just having the Stone Edge Earthquake, honestly. I mean, both of those moves will easily knock out the Salazzle, and we can apply pressure with Poison Sting here with the Claude Sire, and also go for a Stone Edge if we need to. Drift Blim has Icy Wind for the Tropius, right? We are just in a very commanding position, so I'm going to stay in with this Drift Blim afterwards, uh, and we're going to go for this Icy Wind, take out the Tropius, and at that point, I'm just going to come in with my Claude Sire and look to finish this game. Now, the opponent can go for a move here, but even a Dragon Pulse wouldn't be enough. We're able to get to the Stone Edge here before they're able to get to a charge move that's going to do any meaningful damage, and that is going to take out Salazzle, and that's a good game. I <laughs> got it this time. All right. Picking up a nice 5-0 to start off the team. And now we're going to get into the second set where we see a Malamar on the lead. This thing is going to be very awkward to overcome because I have Claude Sire and Dunsparce does not appreciate taking superpowers. But what I'm going to do here is I'm going to go for the Dunsparce. Da -da 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 -da. I'm going to go into my Dunsparce here after four astonishes because that is when the opponent would be getting a foul play. And then I'm going to go ahead and stay... Uh, stay the course here. The opponent is staying in, and I'm going to continue to just kind of rack up some energy, go for a drill run at this point, hope the opponent maybe wants to shield, but the reason why we swap there is because I know that there's no reason for the opponent to want to bother going for superpower, so unless they're going to over farm, um, then they're just going to throw a foul play. That was a gamble, and it may or may not have worked out in my favor, but because the switch clock is back up a little bit sooner than it used to be, we're able to make a quick swap and go for the Icy Wind to knock out the Malamar. Now they have a Dugong in the back, and now this is probably one of my worst enemies with this team, is a Dugong. Dugong has the ability to hit Drift Blim and Claude Sire and make them very, very miserable. However, the opponent not having any shields left makes this a very good opportunity for me to get the shi uh, Shadow Ball off and get this thing very low. I'm actually surprised how much damage that Shadow Ball did. Uh, Drift Blim has a pretty good attack stat, to be honest. Icy Wind, not going to be enough to knock out, but the opponent has a Feraligator, and even though Claude Sire is not a very good matchup into this thing, we are going to be able to come in with a shield up and be able to land at least one move here. Now, I'm going to let this go because I, um, truthfully, I've never played this matchup before, and I didn't know how much damage it did. So for science, I just wanted to see how much damage it would do. Now, thankfully... We are going to be able to land the Earthquake and farm down. However, what I'm going to do here instead is I'm going to come in with my Dunsparce and look to farm this down. If the opponent tries to catch at any point, they're going to get taken out by the rollout damage. But because the double resisted Shadow Claws do very little damage to Dunsparce, I can farm down and get that Rock Slide off on the Dugong. It was a very close game, well played to the opponent. And we're getting into the next game here with Drift Blim into an Azumarill. This is another very awkward lead for this team, especially if they're running Ice Beam. But what I'm going to do here is I'm going to start off by going straight for my Shadow Ball as soon as I get it. And the opponent not throwing on five here. I'm shielding if they throw regardless. Um, but them not throwing on five here hopefully tells me maybe they don't have Ice Beam. Now, the opponent throws a move here, so they're going to chip my Dunsparce before swapping into whatever they're going to come in with. They go for the Ice Beam, and they tell me that they have Ice Beam here. This is very important. Now, the opponent maybe doesn't have a good answer to uh, Dunsparce because they come in with a Tentacruel, and that is definitely not an ideal response to a Dunsparce. Now, we're going to be able to land two Drill Runs before they can even get to their first move here, and then we're going to hopefully be able to get to a third move unless they decide to throw the Scald, which at this point, if they throw the Scald, I'm totally okay with it because that means I can farm down with my Drift Blim, but the opponent goes for an Acid Spray, so I hard pivot into my Drift Blim, and they get to another move, and at this point, I actually have lost count of their energy, and I shield just in case it's the Scald, but it's the Acid Spray, and that feels so bad. We're going to go for the Icy Wind here. The opponent is low enough that this might actually come close to knocking out, but they actually decide to shield to guarantee they get this energy off. And because they're throwing right now, I know that this is just as they get to their second Ice Beam. The opponent now comes in with a Jump Puff, and I'm hoping to get to the Icy Wind, but they throw as soon as they get the Aerial Ace. But this is okay here, because Claude Sire has a very good matchup, given that it has Poison Sting and Stone Edge, and the opponent's... Um, I am seriously, I'm sitting here shoutcasting these battles that I did today, and I've already forgotten what po Pokemon the opponent had that was just on my screen. Dude, I am, my brain is, my brain is just deteriorating at a ridiculous rate. Anyway, we're going to be able to get this move off here. It, 
It was the Azumarill. That's right. That's what it was. We're going to swap into the Dunsparce here, hoping to either catch a move or get some farm on the Dunsparce before the opponent can swap out. But we're going to instead be able to get to this Rock Slide after the opponent farms or comes in with their Azu. We get the farm we need. The Rock Slide is going to come through and take out the opponent's Jump Bluff. That's a good game, even though I didn't remember it. My goodness, I'm getting old. I'm not even old, but I feel old. Mirror leads in this next match here. I'm going to immediately go into Dunsparce because we're going to be able to hopefully... Hopefully, I said. This is the one downside of running Dunsparce and Claude Sire in the back is that Dunsparce is really just a generic safe swap. It's not really aiming to draw anything out specifically, but what it's doing is it's also trying to spam moves. Maybe we can, you know, get the switch clock to come up here, but the opponent making a really nice over farm here. I'm just gonna let this go, I think. And then I have to come in with my Claude Sire in order to truthfully, like I have to come in with Claude Sire here in order to properly absorb this energy. Otherwise, my Drift Blim is gonna have to shield and I don't wanna have to deal with it. And they expect it to come in, they instantly throw the Stone Edge here, but we're getting the Poison Sting down. So now we're gonna just have to see what the opponent's got in the back and they come back in with the Drift Blim, which is nearly at an Icy Wind. So now, I'm hoping that with a shield advantage, I might be able to do something. Now, I don't know exactly how much damage Stone Edge does to a non-Shadow Drift Limb. I know it very nearly one-shots my Shadow Drift Limb, but I don't know exactly how much it's going to do. I'm going to shield this up and then look to swap into my own Drift Limb. The opponent did make a very nice over farm here to be able to make sure they got to an Icy Wind when I swap mine in. Plus, I got that damage registration issue where I could not get my move off here. Now, I go for Shadow Ball here, and I think that the correct play was probably to go for Icy Wind, but only in hindsight after everything has happened, right? So if I go for Icy Wind here, they're going to debuff my defense. And you're going to see that after the Psychic Fangs, I get perfectly farmed down just before I get to the Icy Wind. I think that there is definitely a chance that I get to two Icy Winds here, and it may have made a difference. The opponent now is going to be able to go for another Psychic Fangs. And the only way that I can win this game is if I over farm perfectly and I'm able to get an Earthquake off on the Steelix and then get a Stone Edge off on the Drift Blim, which was energy dry. If I threw that Earthquake right when I got to there, right, right after that fourth Poison Sting, I would have been able to get it off against the Steelix. And then I would have been able to get to the Stone Edge against the Drift Blim because we were close enough after those extra Poison Stings, but the opponent's going to take it in a very well played game. Seriously, there's there's no more there's no more messing around. This is all serious business, man. Everybody's everybody knows what they're doing now. Foretris on the save swap after the opponent leads Gastrodon. I'm actually gonna look to swap after some. I actually swapped late because I didn't know what to do. I'm like, okay, what do I bring in here? And then I'm like, well, they have Volt Switch, so perhaps Claude Sire is the correct answer. But I do remember that this thing does actually have Earthquake as well, so I have to be cough, uh, cautious. But I don't think that I'm gonna have to worry about. Um, earthquake because it's non-stab which means it doesn't get the bonus from being the same type as Ferretris. So it's only that much damage. Now I know how much that does. The opponent's throwing here pretty quick. I know that when Volt Switch doesn't matter if they had the max energy after that Earthquake. It's not going to be enough regardless. I'm going to over farm just a bit before they get to their next mirror shot and then I'm going to be able to take out the Ferretris. Now this is going to come down to what's in the back and they have a Galarian Moltres and at this point I know that I can't swap out. I can't get fancy. I need to keep my alignment. We have a Gastrodon in the back and a Galarian Moltres in the back. We're going to come in with the Dunsparce and the opponent's going to go for a move. And I'm like, you know what? Even if they have the Brave Bird, which they do, and it does a lot of damage, um, I can just use Icy Wind and I also can live a few more Sucker Punches. Like my Dunsparce was healthy enough to keep going without a shield. So we're going to be able to go for the Shadow Ball into this Gastrodon, but the opponent has decided to stop tapping and leave the game so i mean just surrender i i don't know if that's lag i feel like that i mean maybe it was just co conveniently like a coincidence of lag but this happens a lot more often than i would expect it to be lag now i'm just going to continue playing the way i normally would we're going to go for the icy wind get close enough to the second icy wind to make sure that we can still knock this thing out that's going to be a good game here unfortunately the opponent knowing that they lost but deciding that they just wanted to you know waste time and quit which i mean it is what it is i guess right Getting into the next game here, we got Drift Limb versus for Alligator, one of the worst things that I could see on the lead. See, when I built this team, I knew that it was weak to for Alligator lead, but most of them are in the back on the safe swap. So I'm thinking, okay, if I just, you know, play ABA weak to it, but I have Dunsparce in the back, I'll be okay. 
Now, I also get hit with a Polyrath. Now, I don't know about you guys, but this feels just too perfect, and I'm not gonna start talking about algorithm and stuff because I still don't believe in it after all this time. But what is this team if not just to literally exist to beat my team so far, right? So Polyrath, you're gonna see what they have in the back too. It's, it's not gonna make any sense. I have to basically rely on Cloud Sire to sweep this game for me. My pacing with the Drift Limb is terrible into the for Alligator, so I'm just gonna go ahead and swap into my Cloud Sire. And the opponent has a Haunter! And I respect the Haunter. I love Haunter. It's spicy Pokemon, it's fun to play. But my goodness? Really? This team, like, genuinely does not make a whole lot of sense, at least on paper. And if the player is just running what they enjoy, I completely ex I, I respect it. And honestly, I, I'm really only just venting because it's just that perfect hard counter that doesn't matter how you play. There's no way around it, right? But they still play a spicy team, and I respect it. So we're going to take out the Haunter, at least. And my only win condition there, I feel like, was getting the second shield off of that Haunter and then somehow hoping I could get a Shadow Ball off on the, on the, on the Gator, which was not going to happen by any stretch. I lose this game pretty much no matter what, and I don't think there's any way that I could have come around it. But it's just an unfortunate way to, to end, you know, the set on this kind of a loss when, you know... It is what it is. Like, the thing with me is that this team was so good outside of just those games where I just got irrevocably hard counter, right? We get a 3-2 in the set. It's okay. We still went positive. We went 8-2 and two overall. So if we had ELO, this would be nearly 100 points gained in two sets with this team. So I think that Drift Flame is going to turn out to be a very surprising strong pick. And, you know, as more people kind of find out about it, maybe it won't be as surprising anymore. But it's astonishingly good. Anyway, enough dad jokes for me for today, guys. Thank you very much for watching. We're going to catch you in the next video. Bye-bye.